Picture, if you will, rebels, a royal palace in Spain. It's the 16th century, and this huge stone fortress is where King Philip II rules. As we step inside the enormous doors, we enter a long, echoey corridor. There are shelves and shelves of books running along either side of us, and overhead, there are vivid scenes painted on the ceiling. Up ahead, we hear the click, click, click of footsteps on the cool stone floor. It is none other than the young painter, Sofonispa Anguissola. She walks carefully, with a box of paints in her hand and a flock of nervous butterflies in her stomach. As the towering wooden doors at the end of the hall creak open, Sofonispa quickens her step, eager to set up her easel. This is the day she has dreamed about for so long, since she was a little girl, really. For as long as Sofonispa can remember, she's wanted to be an artist. But because she's a girl, she was barred from studying art with anyone outside her home. Her father, knowing she was passionate about painting, arranged for her to live with an artist and study as his assistant or apprentice. Sofonispa learned so much from her mentor and came home from her apprenticeship filled with new ideas and visions. She taught her younger sisters everything she learned, but she was still not seen as an artist. So Sofonispa got herself a different job. She became a lady-in-waiting for Queen Elizabeth de Valois of Spain. This was a high honor and meant Sofonispa got to be a personal assistant to the queen and her infant daughters. The queen enjoyed painting herself and became a great fan of Sofonispa's. In fact, the queen asked Sofonispa to paint a portrait of the infantas, or princesses, Isabella and Catalina. And this portrait would change the course of Sofonispa's life. When Sofonispa showed up with her brushes and paints to capture the little princesses, she didn't know what to expect. They were sweet, rosy-cheeked toddlers, wiggling and giggling, squirming and fidgeting. Sofonispa had no idea how she'd be able to get them to sit still. They were wearing fancy green brocade dresses that made them itch, and their pet parrot kept flying around the room calling. It even swooped down and got its little fluffy feathers stuck in Sofonispa's paint. But Sofonispa had a job to do. She took a deep breath and tried to block out all of the noise and chaos. She focused all of her energy on the brush dipping into the paint, on her hand sweeping across the canvas, bringing these faces to life. She painted the parrot calmly perched on Isabella's outstretched hand as if it was the most docile, delightful pet. She even matched its feathers to the girls' green dresses. When the portrait was done, she felt very proud. And when the king and queen viewed the painting, they were extremely impressed. So impressed that King Philip II asked her to come back and make a series of four paintings. One of each of the children, one of the new queen, and one of himself. And that is how we come to be here just a short time later, at the end of a long echoey corridor in the Grand Palace, stepping with Sofonispa towards the highest honor of her career. She is now officially a royal painter. The butterflies in her stomach spread their wings 
and send tingles of excitement into her fingertips. She can't wait to get hold of her paintbrush and start working. Sofonispa's palette is prepared with a shimmering array of paints made from the very finest pigments. Minty malachite mined in the Ural Mountains. Deep, vibrant red carmine made from crushed beetles. Lustrous blue lapis lazuli made from a stone more precious than gold. The paints feel luxurious as she swipes her brush through them, creamy and smooth. She has access to materials here in the Spanish court that she didn't have back home in Italy painting her sisters or herself. As Sofanispa finishes setting up her workspace how she likes it, the little Princess Catalina makes her entrance. The girl bursts into the room, holding her long black skirt in a bunch. She's trailed by a flurry of ladies in waiting. Seeing Sofanispa, Catalina throws her arms open for an embrace. As she does, a brown furry creature she's been hiding in her skirt jumps out, squeaking and racing around the room. Is that a monkey? He is still running wild, throwing his arms up and down and screeching. Catalina explains that actually he's a marmoset her father brought back from Brazil. Catalina wants to put him in a little outfit she had her dressmaker sew for him, but Sofanispa convinces her just to clip on his leash instead, a delicate gold chain she loops around her hand. Sofanispa poses Catalina in a chair, turning her head toward the easel and her body slightly away. The marmoset settles near Catalina and even looks regal, its shocks of white fur fanning out from its cheeks, complementing the ruffled white collar on Catalina's dress. Sofanispa sees the painting in her mind's eye. The child, dressed all in black except for that lacy collar tilted up and framing her face, her hair crowned with curls and a delicate daffodil, the marmoset between her two rosy hands, mimicking her pose. Someone passes the animal a slice of fruit to keep it still, and Sofanispa begins to paint. She's so happy to finally get started that she imagines the triumphant sound of a symphony in her ears. She uses the bristles of her paintbrush to add a delicate shadow beside Catalina's upturned nose, making it pop off the canvas, just the way the famed painter Michelangelo taught her. You see, Sofanispa has also studied with Michelangelo. She was one of the very few girls to do so. You see, Rebels, Michelangelo was a famous Italian sculptor, architect, poet, and engineer. He lived in an era of time called the Renaissance, and he was very talented in so many different areas. When Sofonispa first met Michelangelo, she was so anxious. She couldn't take her eyes off his face while he studied her work. Her father had sent the great artist her paintings, and Michelangelo had asked to meet her. She showed him a drawing she'd done of a laughing girl. <laughs> Michelangelo tried to hide how impressed he was. Instead of complimenting her, he immediately challenged her to bring him back a painting of a crying boy. So she painted her little brother being bitten by a crayfish. Her brother didn't love that painting, but Michelangelo did. He soon became her mentor and started sending her assignments. She'd do them and he'd give her notes, ways to brighten her colors or shade her figures, making them even more lifelike. But Sofanispa has a style all her own. It is delicate and precise, uniquely hers. 
Sofonisba's paintings don't look like Michelangelo's or anyone else's. She blends her brushstrokes by rubbing and blurring them, creating a painting no one else could have done. Achoo! Just then, the marmoset lets out a wild sneeze and leaps off Catalina's lap. The ladies in waiting chase it around the room while Catalina climbs on top of her chair and starts shouting orders. He went this way. No, now he's behind the curtains. In all of the pandemonium, Sofonispa's small jar of linseed oil tips over and spills on the carpet. Oh no. <laughs> Catalina finds this all very amusing. She has a big grin on her face that Sofonispa wishes she could capture in her portrait, but it wouldn't look very royal. Plus, it's hard to keep a smile on your face for a long time. Try it, Rebels. Smile and freeze. You can only smile for so long without your cheeks cramping up, right? Sofonispa protects the portrait while the marmoset scurries around the room, and Catalina hollers and laughs. Finally, when everyone settles down, Sofonispa suggests that they all take a break for the day. She's gotten a good start, but it'll take many more sessions for the portrait to be up to royal standards. She has her work cut out for her, with another small child to paint, as well as the king and queen. She's ready to clear her head. That night, Sofonispa sits in her room, restless. She feels that familiar tingle of excitement in her fingers. She reaches for a piece of soft red chalk and her leather-bound sketchbook. Then she positions herself in front of the heavy glass mirror and begins to draw. Sketching self-portraits is soothing for Sofonispa. This is how she taught herself to draw people, by studying her own reflection or painting her mother and sisters. When people first saw her portraits, they didn't know what to think. They weren't used to seeing anyone paint themselves, let alone a young woman being so bold as to use a self-portrait to declare that she was a painter. Now Sofonispa is respected, even admired, for her artistry. She will always be grateful to those women who helped her get where she is today. A painter in the royal court of Spain. As she draws this new self-portrait, she sees her years of experience and determination reflected in each one of her features. The light in her eyes the questions on her lips, the thoughtfulness in her raised eyebrows. She takes a moment to thank herself for her dedication and determination, for her hands and heart and mind creating this new portrait together. Sofonispa smiles at her reflection, working quickly with her chalk she captures herself just right. When's the last time someone took a picture of you, Rebels? Maybe it was even a selfie. These days, phones make it easy to take pictures whenever we want. Back in Sofonispa's time, though, you'd be lucky if you had one or two portraits painted over your whole life. As you drift off, think about portraits and what stories our faces tell on a day-to-day -day basis. If Sofonispa was going to paint you, how would you pose? Catalina brought her pet monkey with her. What would you hold in your portrait? What does that item mean to you? Next time you take a selfie, 
remember Sofonispa. And when you get a chance, take a moment to look up her paintings. Once you see them, you'll never forget them or her story. This podcast is a production of Rebel Girls. It's based on the book series Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. This story was produced by Olivia Richard with sound design and mixing by Mumble Media. It was written by Nicole Haratunian, fact checking by Joe Radigan, narration by Janice Morgan. Thank you to the whole Rebel Girls team who make this podcast possible. Stay Rebel. <laughs>